OK, I'm going to give a super fast introduction to the most useful and the coolest tools in the tool panel. You'll notice that many of these tools come with little fly off sub tools, a list of sub tools. If you hover over that little arrow on the right, you can make the them fly off as a little panel, sub panel, so to speak. OK, so here I'm making a shape using the pen tool. It's got smart guide, so I can make a regular shape, such as a, a, a rectangle. I can also make an open shape. So if I do that, that, and that, and that, and now press Escape. There it is, so it's not closed off. So that's the pen tool. I can take one of these little points here drag and convert that into a curve. I can select uh, a shape, an entire shape. There we go. And using that I can distort it should I wish, even rotate it. Uh, and uh, I can change its color. In this case I'm going to change the fill color to uh, green. And I can increase the size of its stroke. Activating the direct selection tool, I can select a single point. I have to click away from the object and then click on it to de deselect all points. There we go. Okay. What else have we got? Well, we've got the shape tool. Let's just select these and delete. We've got shape tool. It's fairly simple to navigate that one. You can know, know your way around there simply enough. Uh, the only mystery, perhaps, is the polygon and star tool. So we have, let's say, the polygon. Uh, we can increase and decrease the number of sides in the polygon tool by pressing the arrow keys. Okay. So that's that. And the same applies to the star. Increase the points on the star. The eraser tool. Let's go back to a polygon. Eraser tool, we can erase it like that, sort of slice a chunk through it to produce two shapes now. Uh, in many ways, this is now uh, been, um, I suppose, replaced by the Pathfinder panel, this functionality, but we can still use it occasionally if we want. Okay, the uh, paintbrush tool. We have a different way of applying a, a, a path, something that's a little bit more free. If I go into outline mode and select it, you can see it's just a, another path with all of these points. It produces rather an untidy result that sometimes needs to be tidied up. OK, we'll go back to preview mode. What else can I show you? Let's delete that, make another shape and fill it with something. And what can I show you now? Well, I can show you the reflect and rotate tools, the rotate tool first. To rotate it, I can just, well, one thing I can do, I can double click on the tool. And that's something you'll uh, notice with a lot of these tools. If you double click on them, you sometimes get interesting options, OK? Um, in this case, what I want to do, I think, is rotate it on this point here, in which case I need to option click down there. And perhaps I can also copy as well and control D, D, D to, replace, uh, to repeat those. OK, so Z, 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 Z to get rid of. So what else we can show you? Well, the, there's the uh, reflect tool and the embiggen tool, sorry, scale tool, do a similar job on reflection and scale. I can leave you to discover how those work. These various tools, uh, what can we do with these? We can do these funky things, OK? All right. Um, and we can also do these funky things. Beware of these. Again, if we go into outline mode, we see that it's producing quite a, an untidy path, uh, which might have to be edited later, OK? And you can, again, change the strength and behavior of these by double-clicking on those uh, uh, tool icons. OK. So what else have we got? Uh, nothing interesting there. OK. 
we have here the mesh tool. Using the mesh tool, we can produce an object like this. It's, it's on the way to something like photorealism. Whenever you uh, Google uh, photorealism in, a, in Illustrator, it, you're probably taken to a page that describes how to use the mesh tool. All right. Um, the blend tool, we may make uh, two shapes and blend between each, each shape. In this case, I've got a, 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 a green shape and I'm blending to a red shape. I can change its color, uh, let's say uh, a blue to a red. There we go. All right, and that's a, a live blend between them. And you can, there are uh, rather interesting variants. For instance, I can, um, let's say, you know, that do stuff like that to get a kind of a zoom 3D effect. Uh, that's the mesh tool. We have the symbol shifter tool and its, its variants. So using the, that tool, I made this thing here. Uh, but that really has to be, uh, you best watch one of my videos to find out how this thing works, the symbol shifter tool. It's, it does things, uh, it works on things called symbols, which is uh, illustrator's uh, version of the, um, what's it called, of the instancing uh, technology, which is used by a number of applications. And then there's the artboard tool, which we can use to change the size of your artboard. It works a bit like uh, Photoshop's crop tool. Okay, so something like that. Um, what else? You, uh, there's the hand tool, but you never need that. You just need to press the space bar to navigate, okay? And use the scroll wheel to go up and down and uh, the scroll wheel plus option to go in and out. So that's it, super duper duper fast. Oh, there's one other thing, the eyedropper tool. Okay, so here we have two shapes. So let's just resize them so you can see them. And uh, what I want to do is to transfer the appearance of this onto that. Okay, so I select the thing that I want to change. Let's just hide those. And I press the eyedropper and I click once on the, my uh, object. And there we go. So I've transferred the appearance from one thing to the other. So kind of fun. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff. There's a lot there I haven't covered. Most of that stuff isn't really useful. All right.